Okay, this is the west side of the roof, and I just don't have that much mountain goat in me today. Um, the roof just doesn't look like it's very old. I, I got some clues on that, but right there, if you can see, um, we got just a little bit of a bruising, if you will, impact marks, if you will, that could have been caused by hail. Uh, it could have been just other people who were braver than I am, uh, their feet. I mean, they had to get up here some kind of way, and there's a reason why I'm over here. Uh, this, to me, this was the most... you know, accessible slope. And if I had a chance of getting up here, this has been the one that I'd wanted to do it with. So, as we move down here a little bit, we can see that the underlayment is on top of the drip edge. It's supposed to be like that. That's cascading. And by the age, the style of the underlayment, it tells me that this installation hadn't happened very long ago. And coming on along here, and right here, we can... Remember why I was showing you the underlayment? You got your shingles, your edge flashing, and then your fascia board. That, that little metal flashing right in there is supposed to be gap, excuse me, lapped. A minimum of two inches. So that's what's supposed to have happened there. So let's try to keep this down to two videos because I'm going to go around with a camera pole and I'm going to get some clues also. When we do the electric meter video. But we're on the south side of the house now. You see a lot of action on this side. And I wanted to look over this master bedroom window too. Well, I had the ladder up. Perfect example. So you're supposed to have Z-bar flashing here over these windows. That's not a roof issue. It's a wall issue. And that's why they have all this putty in here. We've had water issues. They didn't just decide one day I need to put a little putty up there. Okay. Now, just like the underlayment, it's supposed to cascade down over the drip edge flashing. The drip edge flashing is supposed to cascade down over the rain gutters. And it also looks like this roof is newer than the rain gutters. I can understand not replacing the rain gutters if it doesn't look like I really need it. But rain gutters last about 14 years. Roof coverings in here, in this part of town, this part of the state, this part of the nation, in this geographical location, lasts about 14 years. So now we've got a newer roof system with an older rain gutter system. It might be, or not, but it might be that you're replacing this rain gutter system before you replace the roof. So now you're just like, you know, one year you're replacing the rain gutters, and then two years later you're replacing the roof. That kind of thing. This rain gutter obviously is holding water. It's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to drain. It's supposed to drain. We got three attic vents up there. Our chimney has a cricket. Okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit. In fact, I'll just come down and talk about it because it's kind of a roof thing. And then the next video, we'll just get a camera pole and we'll go around and take some other images. It's called step flashing right here. And it's supposed to be bent and curled in and tightened and flashed so that wind-driven rain doesn't get in there. And, and flash so that wind driven rain. Do you think wind driven rain can get in there? I do. Also, you're supposed to have kick out flashing right here so that water doesn't drain down and rot this. And then your rain gutter 
Okay, it should be about an inch away from the siding. It shouldn't be butted up next to the siding like that. And again, you should have kick out flashing there. We'll just come along to the other side because it better illustrates what I'm talking about on the kick out flashing. See that? Big wind driven rain can get up in there, I do.